Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon to everyone. I hope everyone has a great day so far, wherever in uh, uh, in the world you're located. Uh, I see we have people joining us from uh, Asia, from Australia, from Europe. That's fantastic. Uh, welcome, guys. Welcome. All right. So. What we're gonna see here, as you can uh, you can read on the screen, is we're gonna start the series of trading psychology, and as I explained on the live trading session uh, earlier this morning, we've put together some uh, series, some webinar series. So uh, slowly and gradually, you will be able to shift your way of thinking in terms of uh, everything, every aspect of your life and adapt the new uh, way it requires you to think to become a trader you want to, to be, okay? A profitable, successful trader and so on. So this series will help you exactly to achieve that level. Now, just to, to make sure, the and to inform everyone that this content is for general information only and it's not intended to provide trading or investment uh, advice or personal recommendation uh if i will show some live tradings here it's based on the way i see the market based of on my own beliefs about what it's going to happen next uh it that don't have i do not have or carry any inside information so uh if you decide to take trades that i take just understand your risk as well so as our title say trading psychology and i will start i will approach this series from a different uh way i i believe a very interesting way of uh, of introduction let's say at this uh, first webinar i will start with support and resistance level i believe that all of us we at some extent we understand what is support what is resistant and we trade uh, from these levels. So we are all familiar with uh, support and resistance zones uh, in any market, all right? So it's gonna be an easy uh, transformation for you gradually. Just to talk about, uh, about Admirals here in our company, we are a Forex and CFD broker. We offer more than 8,000 financial instruments. Uh, now we are growing uh, massively into uh, the investment uh, process. So you can open an investment account with us and you can build up your investment portfolio and um, soon, I believe I will start, some, I will launch some webinars uh, in terms of investment and uh, hopefully you guys are gonna find them really valuable. Multiple license holder, we have from SISEC, from FCA in uh, England, from Estonia, EFSA and Australia, the ASIC of course. Spreads, we try to keep them as minimal as possible, especially for our intraday trading and you can uh, access our uh, financial instrument through the MetaTrader platform. And of course, now from our native mobile application, uh, I use it a lot. Now it's pretty much the majority of uh, my trades are placed through the application. I do my analysis though on the computer, my technical analysis, but it's so simple and easy to just use the application to place trades. Also it's, it's a tool that has all my account details in one place and I don't need to just open different uh, tabs on the computer just to access my account. I can uh, fund it, withdraw, change on the information and open more accounts and so on. Now, currently we are running a promotion and we reduce the spreads um, about 20%, 25%. So it makes it even more uh, even better in my opinion when it comes to intraday trading, okay? 
Uh, guys, it's been a while since we we do actually it's been a, a long time since we do but it's been a while that i noticed that not many people they are aware about our uh, about our weekly uh, podcast uh, i go through in about five minutes all the major events happen in the market if something happened during the the weekend i will announce it and i'll go through the major market uh, calendar events especially for forex traders, indices traders, it's, uh, it's a no brainer. You can listen it from, uh, you can listen it from, um, from your devices. And in case you are, you don't know where to find it here, it's the admiralsmarket.com. You click where it says analytics and here are weekly trading podcasts. You scroll down and you find all the podcasts. I put the title here. You can listen to it directly from here or you can download it on your device. Also, you can share it with family and friends. So everyone keeps uh, updated with the news in the market. Let's continue. Up. Um, sorry, guys, let me bring it up. Yeah, I hope everyone can see my screen. Yeah, just to double check. Can you see? Can you see the weekly fundamental analysis? Please on the chat, just throw a quick yes to make sure everyone is on the on the right screen. Yep. Okay, great. In the meantime, I'm sharing with you guys the where can you find the podcast? So it's easy access. So here is the link. Thank you, Peter, for your answer. And let's keep let's keep moving. Of course, the channels. If case you haven't you haven't uh, accessed them yet, if you are new with us, here is the youtube channel i will share with you the link up youtube channel here it is uh, you didn't take it in a clickable oh one second guys because it doesn't come to you as a clickable format there it is so you can click here you can subscribe and like the videos we put in case you haven't uh, noticed yet we do live trading on a daily basis here are the webinars we uh, we record like this one here you can access it at any time and we have also the recordings of the morning briefing uh, trading webinar i do on from monday to friday so you can watch them there also Instagram account, uh, it's one of the very informative uh, tool and page. You can see many reels, many stories, um, many uh, explanations about the market, about stocks, about everything what we do here. And I will share it with you right now. And last one, it's the Telegram channel, guys. Please make sure you... Uh, you follow us on Telegram so you can get all the updates about the post we make. There are very valuable information you can access to read about the markets, about the hot news uh, upcoming, how maybe the market will react. So really, it's, uh, it's an awesome tool to keep in your trading arsenal. So let's go back to... Uh, let's go back to our PowerPoint. And so for me, just a very brief introduction for those who haven't chance, uh, haven't had the chance to watch any of my content. My name is Theo. Uh, I started my trading career 10 years ago in, uh, in Australia, in Melbourne and Sydney. And uh, I hold a master's in physics. When it comes to investing, I'm a long-term investor. I like to 
mostly buy and hold uh, automotive uh, stocks and some companies from the Nasdaq. Uh, when it comes to trading now, I'm a swing trader after uh, many, many years as a day trader. And here at Admirals, I'm, um, uh, I'm a trading educator and, and market analyst. So uh, I carry a lot of experience that I will pass it on to you uh, gradually through all the webinars and the live trading series we do. So now what's on for today? We're gonna start, as I said, with the trading psychology uh, from the technical analysis perspective, because I want to make a nice smooth into this path of the trading uh, mindset environment. And then we're going to see why traders care about these price levels. We are talking about support and resistance, obviously, and we want to understand the psychology behind them and how do they um, see the market, what do they do, why they do what they do, and so on and so forth. But as always, I will uh, like to briefly go through what did we learn from the previous webinars and how we're going to connect them with the today's webinars. We've, we've done the analysis of the trend. We explain what is an uptrend. We explain the impulse move, the retracements as a consequence of a trend then another impulse move, then a, uh, a move against the prevailing trend, then another impulse move. This leaves this mark in the chart and we see just gradually prices raising and when they fall, they don't fall in 100% um, backwards, but they just retrace a little bit and then they keep rising, creating a higher high in the market and uh, then a higher low in the market. Then when it comes to the next move, the buyers step in again and we have a new high and then we have uh, this sequence of higher highs and higher lows. Why do we show that? Because now we're gonna, we're gonna reveal uh, what's happening behind these decisions and why the market from uh, a human's perspective and the psychology, why they move in this way they move okay then or possibly we saw the downtrend analysis these are series of lower highs and lower lows so uh, each move to the downside it's lower than the previous one and uh, each retracement it's also lower than the previous retracement so the market doesn't break a structure of lower lows and lower highs we call this uh, faulting in the line swings the turning points regardless if they are on the low or on the high, in an uptrend, in a downtrend, we call them general swings. We call the, the move aligned with the predominant direction impulse move, and we call as a retracement the move uh, against the prevailing uh, trend. And to have this sequence of lower highs and lower lows in a downtrend, we want the retracements to be shorten in duration and uh, stay lower in price compared to the impulse move. Then last, we talked about the range market and we say that in a range market, the price is uh, just moving within a structure um, support and resistance. At the bottom, we find the support. At the top, we find the resistance. And when the price comes to these areas of support or resistance, we see just a reaction and it moves again to the opposite uh, way. Now, why this is happening? What's the underlying dynamic behind these market participants? Okay, uh, so far in our trading, we see everything as, um, as a way of market behavior, but remember markets, are consist by humans, by traders. Even if there are high frequency trading system, algos, these customized by traders. So behind every sense, it's a human who has beliefs and thoughts about what it's gonna happen next in the market. Uh, then we saw an example of how can you participate 
on a lower time frame scales using higher time frame analysis. And characteristically, we showed this Euro USD weekly chart, and we recognize that we have a lower highs and lower lows that marks a downtrend. Then we flip to the daily chart and we try to find some entries with a tighter stop loss and a good reward to risk more than two to one. And we can find here where I mark the same areas. We have this bearish engulfing candle, then boom, move to the downside. The market make again a new low and then it pulls back another bearish engulfing, another bearish engulfing. All these trades, we took them on the morning briefing live trading show as well. So if you are around, you could see that we talked about these trades. And um, also we, we talked about this one as well, but we don't have a strong price action the way we teach it. And lastly, we share the checklist. I share it almost on every uh, morning webinar. That's how I, I trade. That's the, the entries, the parameters. That's um, the rules I use to participate at any given moment. And by saying this example between weekly and daily, you can use this checklist to enter on the 15 minutes on one minute chart. I do not recommend it personally to enter on the one minute and 15 minute chart or five minute chart with this uh, checklist because the last parameter, it's the candlestick part and the engulfings and the pin bars. And based on my uh, extensive experience, the, the best candlestick patterns, they work, they are more reliable on the daily charts and weekly charts, okay? On the four hour charts, they give very good signals as well. But um, to be really, really uh, honest, I see it working much better on the, on the daily charts, okay? So this is for the trending market and this is for the ranging market. We want in all the occasions to have horizontals, some kind of Fibonacci retracement, that's a golden ratio, 61.8. Then if it comes from a trend line support or resistance, and then we are looking to find the catalyst. And for the ranging market, we want to see the market just making topics and bottoms, then to have a structure horizontal. Up, oh, I think it will be better if I will draw you something like here. Uh, for a reason. I cannot use this one. Okay, anyway. So, and for the ranging market, we said that we want to structure the market between a support and a resistance. We can find a double top, a double bottom, indicating that there is uh, a weight on the one side and then candlestick pattern like uh, price action engulfing or a pin bar on the daily chart extra confirmation if you want to use MACD moving average conversion divergence to see the deviation between price and the indicator. So uh, these are really helpful. I will really encourage you guys to take some screenshots if you want and to print it out. Or if you want, just let me know on the chat below and I will send it to you so you can download the PDF format. Please, if you want that, uh, type on the chat. There is a chat box and you can use it to, to communicate with me during this webinar. Uh, guys, I, I always encourage the participants on my webinars to type all their thoughts, all their opinions, options about the market. If you are trading something now, if it's something that bothers you within your trading, this is the right time. To, to say it out loud, because trust me, nobody born to be a trader. We all want at some point to express what we think to someone more uh, expert than us who has more experience. So uh, here we do not charge anything to, uh, to help you. And uh, it's my pure and honest satisfaction to, to read some questions and answer them out loud so I can help you to move one step ahead in your trading. So what's the psychology of the traders? Take some deep breath because that's a big, big, big one here. Now, I would like you to 
um, to read this slide, guys, okay, we have, we see here this chart pattern of a higher highs and a higher lows. And we have these swings in the market here. Okay. Now, can, can anybody on the chat box below type, what do you see here actually? And if, what, what do you see here? If means something to you, if it's something connected with, with yourself, with your thought, with your emotions, please type it on the chat box below. You can just simply answer no, just please say something so, uh, so I understand that you are also with me and, uh, and this makes sense. So what does it mean to you? You see an impulse move to the upside, you see another line here, you see some price moving towards and making higher high, the B1 with a B2. And then you see the, the bottom here with some uh, area of support holding the prices and gradually makes them make another B3 higher high. Does this mean anything to anyone? Structure. That's correct, Guy Van. Structure, that means structure to you. Can I ask you something? Do you feel any emotions when you see this uh, structure? Do you have any emotions attached or it's very neutral to you? Excitement and fear, that's absolutely fantastic. That's exactly what do we see here. We see structure, we see excitement and fear. Guys, thank you so much for your answers. Now, does this structure and does this excitement and fear makes you feel bad, happy, sad, satisfied, optimistic, pessimistic? Does it create any kind of emotions right now at this moment to you or it's really neutral? Guys, it's important. I want to see an answer. Okay, hey, when I'm prepared to go up and then it pulls back, that's fantastic. Now we haven't, uh, not anymore, yeah, neutral until I go to put the trade on. Spot on, Peter, spot on. So, guys, we are watching a pattern that if we ask 50 traders, what do you see here? We will all agree that we see a series of higher highs and higher lows. So do we all agree that this is an uptrend? Do we all agree that we see a pattern that indicates an uptrend? Regardless if you're going to trade it or if you traded it before or if you are willing to trade it, don't think in terms of a trader now. Just think in terms of someone who see this pattern and recognize it that it's just a series of higher highs and higher lows. And it looks like that this currency pair, this indice, this stock, let's say it's um, an Apple stock or a Samsung stock. And we just see that this company is doing well and it's just moved higher and higher and higher, right? So, if we see the next slide, we can all agree that it means maybe nothing to us, right? And as Peter mentioned, it means nothing until it will be the time we do believe is appropriate to initiate a trade. Guys, I repeat that. I'm 100% sure that people in this webinar and uh, who, who watch us live and people, they're going to watch this when we're going to upload it in the recording format, you all come to the realization that 
this particular moment right now, it means absolutely nothing. If I could scratch it, then I could mark it like this, I will do. It means absolutely nothing unless it is a time that we have to initiate a trade, unless it is a time that we have to risk our money on the table, unless it is a time that we have to think in terms of what can it happen at a three onwards. All right. I hope everyone understand this because that's the holy grail of the trader uh, way of thinking, guys. Everything in trading means nothing until the time we decide that we have an opinion. And as humans, we always want it in our nature to need, we need to be right. So our human nature when it comes to interact with trading, it's going to be expressed the same way we expressed ourselves as human on our daily basis of activities and obligations in life. It's like when, when we, if, if some of you drive a car, when you drive the car and, uh, and you are, on the road, let's say, it's in your human nature to want to be right in terms of what you're going to do next. So you avoid any crash, you avoid any um, accident. So you want to know what is going to happen uh, in front of you and you are in control. We are talking in, an, in a normal conditions, right? Not about the uh, the sudden situations, the unfortunate sudden actions. When it comes to trading, we bring the exact same behavior. So for us, trading means nothing. Price, sorry, the price uh, movement means nothing unless is the time to initiate a trade. So let's take the two occasions here. As all agree in this webinar, we do see a market that indicates higher highs and higher lows, higher highs and higher lows. So A1, A2 is higher than A1, A3 is higher than A2. B2 is higher than B1 and B3 is higher than B2, right? I think we all agree with that. So we see an uptrending market. In this uptrending market, there are two beliefs from the participants. The first belief is that prices, they gonna move upwards and then prices, they're going to move uh, downwards, right? So we have this belief that from here, the prices are going to move to the upside. But also we have the belief that from here, the prices, they can move to the downside. Also the same here, because let's say we start this impulse move from this area, prices, they just move up. Then for us to initiate more positions at the A2, let's say this is the $5 price of the stock. I just say an example that it's a stock. This is a $5, then it came to the $20 and we want to buy at $15. So, for the price to go from 20 to 15, do we all agree that the market has to sell off? So don't we agree that the price has to move to the downside? I think yes, right? But how do we behave when 
actually we are participating in the market. Let's see the example here I, I prepare for you. So, uh, one second, guys. So, let's say that at B1, traders, the crowd, big funds, small funds, hedge funds, everyone, whoever participated in this market, they see they, they have their own beliefs for different reasons. Maybe it's a technical level, maybe it's a fundamental, maybe it's an announcement, maybe it's interest rate. Whatever is the known and unknown reason, we don't take it in consideration. The only thing we take in consideration right now is that traders, market party slash market participants, believe that this market is going to move to the downside at B1. So they start selling at B1 and they are happy to see the prices moving to the downside. Regardless if this is the time frame of the hourly chart or the one minute chart or the daily chart or the four hour chart or the weekly chart, doesn't matter. We don't take in uh, consideration the time frame here. We take only in consideration the price movement. So let's say the traders who enter short here, they are super happy when they see the prices decline. They are throwing some parties here. They have some drinks maybe. They are excited. Then at some point, the market decided, the market participants decided that this price at A1, it's the lowest it has to go at this particular moment. And they decided, those who are moving the markets, to start buying gradually and pushing the prices higher and higher and higher. And let's say, as we said in our example, that was the uh, five, um, sorry, the five dollar. So uh, some people sell it from the ten dollar. Here are the five dollar. They didn't took their profits because when we see the market move in our direction, we just feel more uh, optimistic, right? When we see our account in plus and making money, we like it. So why to get out of the trade, right? then we, we see the price gradually push to the upside. And let's say at this point here, those who were sellers on the B1, how do they feel when they see the price moving upwards? And in their head, in their mind, guys, excuse me for a sec. Uh, it looks like something. Guys, can you all see the circle I'm drawing in the screen now? Can you all see the circle? Please type yes, yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. So let me go back. Okay. Perfect. So at this point here, the traders who, who sold that B1, first, they feel betrayed. Now you're going to ask me, why do they feel betrayed? Because we all come to the point when we see our profits reduced in our trading accounts, we start feeling upset with ourselves that we didn't close the market then in our nature is whom we're going to blame now. Am I going to blame myself? Of course not. Who am I going to blame? The market. Yeah, the market. So the market took my money away. Hey, what am I doing now? I lost 50% of my profits. Let's say I was on a $100 profit. Now I'm only on a $50 profit and I'm upset. So I want revenge, right? I want to get my money back, correct? 
I would like to see your faces right now, those who are trading at least for a while for this uh, moment. Okay. I also went through, all of us went through, so don't need to be ashamed. We are here to understand what we have to do. First, we, we have to understand why we behave like this. And I really um, uh, encourage everyone to express their, their feelings and their thoughts because that's the only way to admit that, hey, I went through that. I understand it's normal. It's nothing wrong with that. Doesn't mean I'm a bad person doesn't mean I'm not capable to be uh, an excellent trader if I want to be or an investor that I'm going to show you uh, in other webinars how to invest as well. So it, it's just the way it is. It's our learning process and uh, we have to feel proud and, and, uh, and we have to encourage ourselves to take the time to admit our uh, and accept our human nature and then just learn to think in market perspective way of thinking. Okay, it's nothing wrong with that, really. So what a trader at B1 is doing here is just letting them trade goes and goes and goes. When it comes here, it says, am I gonna do break even? No, I, I lost 100% of my profit. So the market took them, I'm gonna wait for the market to, to retrace back and uh, hopefully I'm gonna be in a, in a winning trade. So let's leave it up to here. Let's don't continue this, this uh, emotional psychological procedure and let's go to the other side and then we're gonna come back. Let's say that was an uptrend. Okay, we don't see the continuation but let's say that was an uptrend. So. The trader at A1, the one who uses market analysis, the one who uses uh, trend following strategies, the one who is patient, who has a checklist and understand that I want to trade with the momentum. The momentum is upwards, let's say at this point, and I want to trade with that. So. The trader at A1 initiates a position, buys this um, stock for $5 or put it at $6, doesn't matter. At this point here, the stock is traded at $10 based on this example. So how, does, how do you feel if you are this trader here? And I'm sure some people, if not all of you, you experience this uh, trading procedure that you get into with a trend, you get into a position early in the trend development, and you see that the market is just moving in your favor. So how do you feel? You feel all the positive, we feel all the positive emotions in the world. We feel excitement first. Second, we feel inner satisfaction. We feel that uh, hey, I pat myself, I'm proud of my decision. It's like we have all this first state of euphoria, the initial state of euphoria in a very uh, calm way. And we turn to ourselves and say, okay, I'm a great trader. What I'm gonna do next, I'm getting ready. I'm gonna increase my trading size. I'm gonna, if I trade with 2% uh, of my capital next trade, my goodness, I'm going to trade with 5%. I'm going to make double and triple. I'm going to skyrocket this business. So we have this trader confirming his decision to participate at this moment here. He sees the market or she sees the market. It's moving, it's moving, it's breaking the last swing, the B1. My goodness, this is an outstanding. That was 10, that was $20. I got in at five, I'm four times in profit. And if I risk 2%, I'm eight times in profit, whatever I risk. Then I see the market moving upwards and upwards and upwards. And then... I just become so, uh, so, so excited. I do not perceive 
any of the risk in the market. I close my position in a five, six, seven uh, times profit. And then I say, okay, I see this reversal here. Pfft, reversal, oh my goodness. I'm going to go all in at B2 because I see the market is going to reverse. And then I'm going to get out when the market is going to give me another three, four, five, six, seven to one. Then this trader enters here at B2 and the euphoria it start getting out of total uh, control and at some point the market bounces here this trader risked whatever earned in this move to the upside and is going against the prevailing trend but the state of euphoria the trader experience right now does not allow him or her to understand and read that this market is in an uptrend. And if he or she wants to, to sell against a prevailing trend, the trader needs to know to cut the trade size. The trader needs to know to aim for very little uh, reward to risk. It needs to apply some much more discipline. But this trader, it's still under this euphoria state of mind and it does not perceive any risk at all associated with trading. It does not, most of the cases, it does not even set up a productive stop if the market reverse to take out of the trade. The market is just coming as an age, a natural consequence of an uptrend. It's coming to this uh, retesting area of the last swing, and it just keep moving upwards. When the market, it comes all the way at B2, this euphoric state of mind trader is start adding to the losing trade instead of just close it at least here and either become a buyer or just uh, sit down and relax until it will be ready to participate again in the market. So this trader is just start adding to the positions and when uh, he sees his, his account just blowing uh, out, it start feeling so upset, so uh, negative with himself, with his decision, and he just let the account blow up and then uh, it's just going through this mental panic moment. But everything could be avoided by simply understand the nature of trading. And this nature of trading is how to think in probable events, in probable outcomes. That's the one I'm going to do in the next webinar. Okay, now I try to make an introduction and an association with what we all experience at some point, especially as beginners and intermediate traders. Okay, so we have two occasions here and guys here is the breakthrough moment we have a market that offers opportunities to both buyers and sellers the market gave both buyer and seller profit but none of them managed to keep the profit for at least some time and, uh, and, and create trades similar than the winnings one. So why this is happening? What's the reason behind? The, in simple words, the reason is that we do not perceive the market information from 
from a logical perspective and we mix all the emotions and all the needs we have as humans, we bring all these needs into the market. The need to feel good, the need to be right, the need to make money, the need to uh, feel proud, the need to say to our friends and family that, hey, I made this trade and it was, I make X amount of dollars or uh, I risk um, $100 and I make 10 times my account. So this, this human needs, which are absolutely normal, nothing wrong with that. But unfortunately, when we bring them in the market, that's where we experience that uh, frustration, emotional roller coaster, and we start doubting first ourselves. We doubt our capabilities to become good traders and investors, and we doubt our skill to read the market from its nature perspective. Okay, guys. So what I'm saying now, I'm going to break it down a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot in the next series. Okay, so, uh, but I really cannot give you a, a four or five days intense um, education in just one hour. Okay, we're going to need some time. And I try to be spot on, on the root of the problem so we all can associate and we can understand next time when we faced with these challenges. Let's move on. Now, this pattern here, there is a pair Australia, uh, Euro Australian dollar right now on the daily chart, and it represents exactly this image. So let's go through. We said that this move to the upside, it was an impulse move, and traders, they see that price came to a point that at B1, it's uh, it's too expensive and we see this red candle here so what do traders do they just start selling but if you sell here where is your stop loss let's say you put it over there okay good where is your target maybe somewhere here or even worse if that trader didn't even put a stop loss and blow up its account only in one single trade okay that's not good as well and we have to be careful about that so trend following traders they don't tend to take this type of trades but a skillful trader maybe it's gonna participate in this market but if you know what each individual candlestick represents at this completion here you will definitely be out of the trade at least even on a break even somewhere here because when we saw these sellers coming at this area the next seller it didn't create a lower low it created lower high but it stayed as an inside candle it means it was an indecision if the sellers are uh, going to control this market if the sellers are strong and they're going to dominate the market, why not? They don't, they don't, why don't they create momentum, right? And then this candle here opens there, close there, leave this tail, and it's what we call a false breakout of the mother candle. So that's the mother, that's the body, that's the, um, the inside candle. And this, we have a false break. So that will be a very, very uh, early warning for this trader. Hey, get out of the position. This doesn't move. Don't try to force it. Don't try to play with that. But when uh, this information arises, the trader were so overwhelmed by this small profit, by this winning trade, that it couldn't even perceive this information as a reversal, possible, not reversal, a possible reversal in the market. All right. And then the market is just pushed to the upside. And 
this trader feels so scared. Now, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Either it leaves the trade just to blow up its account, depends on the, on the amount the account has and how free margin the account had at that stage, or it just closed the trade with a, with a large loss uh, because it felt scared and it felt all these emotions. Let's go to this trader here who bought at A1, let's say, and sell and sold here and enter short from this pin bar. This trader here at A1 identified this pattern, let's say, put a buy stop here, a stop loss here, and experienced this nice big impulse trade, good profit, everything is nice, two, three, two, three, two, one, maybe more, and took the profits. And then this trader see this at B2, see this pin bar here. And what it is, what, what the trader does, just enter sell. And then the next day, he sees this strong candle here, the red candle, my goodness, sellers are all over the place. Yeah, 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 I would like to, oh, to see my account go times five, times 10 tonight. Next candle, inside candle, false break of the top. The traders see, oh my God, more sellers, they enter the market. It doesn't, that state of euphoria and enthusiasm doesn't allow the trader to be, um, to be cautious of what the market is telling him. And he's in a winning trade, but he doesn't understand that this is a higher high and this is an uptrend, and this is a very low probability trade. And then we have an inside candle that didn't even make a new low. So how do you want to experience selling pressure momentum to the downside if the candle told you, showed you that all the market, part, all the market participants in this particular time frame, they did, they weren't able to create new low in the prices. They did, they wasn't able to dominate the market. Then the next day, boom, bullish engulfing. From the support in align with the trend and people who are on the sidelines and waiting patience for this bullish engulfing, they buy here, they have their stop below and they experience nice trade to the upside. But this trader here, it's so overwhelmed by all these uh, all these emotions that they flip the euphoria to frustration now, and he does not perceive this information as, excuse me, <coughs> as an early warning that the market shifted and this trend, let's say, then this move to the downside, it's nothing but the normal retracement of the market. So at some stage, he has enough. He either gets out with a big loss. He either wait for the market to come here and hopefully close the position on break even. And, and it just ending up giving back all the profits make from here and sometimes many more. So how can we avoid this is the, the next question. How can we think in how we can start believing that we need to think in uh, how the market work? Well, it's simple to say, but it's not that simple to apply. We have to find a, we have to try a trading plan. We have to stick to the trading plan for some period. We have to backtest the trading plan, or if we believe that it's a good trading plan, that's the one, the, at least the one I'm sharing with you guys. And purely it's the one I use. I'm, I'm not promoting my trading plan. It's just uh, really, I don't have any benefit if you're going to make this trader or not. It's just, um, I make this trader, I'm giving you the tools I have. So it's up to you. 
And I'm challenging you to, to back test it, to see if it works for you, maybe for your personality. This uh, checklist does not work for you. That's absolutely fine. But at least start from somewhere. And I, all en I encourage everyone to use it first on the demo account. If you are using something else, just um, accept the process, use it on a demo account first and see how can you trust this, this checklist. All right. And then we have the other market condition, which is the ranging market condition. And what do we see here? We see that the price is just fluctuating between uh, a price level that we call support if it's below the current price and a resistance if it's above the current price. So let's move to the next one. Here, I took this example and I replicate the line from the pair, the daily chart of the Euro Canadian dollar. Okay, some months ago, we had this trading range and we took few trades here. So what's happening at the support and at the resistance? First, the market comes to the S1. At this stage, let's say we are in a downtrend like the Euro Canadian dollar was in a downtrend at that moment. The market is just making lower highs and lower lows. And at some point, that's a, a normal, absolutely um, normal behavior of the market to make a low, then retrace and make another low. So until the S1, we don't know if it's a ranging market. So after we see the R2, we say, hey, this is very equal to this swing point. So maybe this is going to be uh, a ranging market. Or if we want, we can say, okay, the predominant trend is down. I see this reversal green, um, reversal red candle here. So I can sell. When the market at this area here, it's unable to make a new low, we see that maybe a range will start. Then this bullish engulfing candle, it's a high probability trade to trade to the upside. And at this moment, we have a confirmation of a ranging market. So R1S1, R2S2, they confirm to uh, tops, to bottoms. When we have two points, we can draw any line. So we connect these two points here and we draw this horizontal. We connect these two points here. We draw this horizontal. So we map this market and we understand that it's in a downtrend. Uh, sorry, that it's in a range in market. Now, when the market comes, the price come and retest this area here, what do we see? We see that sellers, they stepped in. So we can start selling. What happened here? People who doesn't pay too much attention to the price action like I do, they blindly buying from support and selling from resistance. At some point, it gives you very good reward to risk, but the harm is doing to your psychology and your mental uh, trading stage, it's bigger than the reward it gives you because now the traders, they get into the state of not perceiving any risk in the market. Why? Because they see a solid boundaries at the bottom and at the top with this, within this range environment. And then they put a buy order here, gets fuel right at the bottom, and then boom, it goes all the way up. If they have a tight stop loss here, they can make easily six, seven to one. Wow, fantastic. What's happening here now? They initiate the sell position, get fuel right at the resistance, and then boom, we come here. They take their profits, and what do they do here? They don't perceive any risk, right? Because for one, two, three, four trades, they were totally right, and they made so much money. And what do, how do they behave here? Can, I, can anyone, anyone tell me? 
they're going to just put a buy order, right? No risk management, no stop loss, nothing. Again, the euphoria kicks in. But guess what? If you go and see the chart of euro against the Canadian dollar, this market, it's still, uh, it hasn't, it, it's still after three months, it doesn't even uh, came back to this point here to take these traders without stop losses out if they haven't blown their accounts yet. All right, guys, you see how this stuff slowly, slowly, they start applying uh, within the actual real market conditions. And my and I aim in all the webinars to use live trading examples that if you go back and you watch my morning uh, briefing live trading sessions, you will see how I was talking about this market and how we were analyzing and the traders who took trades here, they were buyers here, they were buyers there, and they were out of, uh, the, uh, out of the trades when the market hit the resistance. Okay, so I will definitely, I will leave you for this. I will definitely encourage you to start participating on the morning uh, live webinars I do. If you haven't participated uh, yet, just to, to make sure that you, uh, that you understand how to apply all this stuff we are, uh, we are saying here and many, many, many more. Okay, just in case you haven't, uh, you don't have the link yet. Let me share it with you. Uh, okay, so you can sign up for the live trading uh, webinars. You can get notifications at every time uh, we, we go live. All right, guys, that was the introduction in this series of a trading psychology. Uh, I hope I gave you a lot, a lot, a lot of information in this one hour and you really understand the basics of uh, how we can, uh, we can start seeing ourselves replicate some behaviors in the market. And from now on, I want to believe that when you're going to come across to similar occasions, now you're going to start thinking, maybe is my myself seeing something it's not there? Or do I um, solidly, technically, subjectively see the thing that the market is telling me? So I will leave you with this for now. Really, I hope you gain a lot of value with that. I said that's the beginning of the trading psychology and more and more they're going to follow uh, please make sure if you need to watch this again, please, we're going to upload it tomorrow. It's going to be on the YouTube channel where I show you. And um, if you have any questions, it's the, the way to communicate. Just write your comments below on the, on the YouTube when we upload it. And I will make sure I will answer them because I received the notification. So I will answer your questions. And we can have a nice conversation there. People who are watching this webinar also, uh, when they're going to have their questions, they can share their thoughts. How do they feel? And you will see that it's going to be created a nice uh, conversation at some point that it's going to help every one of, of us guys, every one of you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for your participation. Again, I hope you have a great day for the rest of your day, wherever you are in the world. And I look forward to see you tomorrow on the morning live trading webinar or next time on this webinar. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you and bye for now.